My dad was fascinated by flying, first of all. Uh, that was his hobby. And when he saw that many soldiers were being sent to the front, he came to my grandfather, then President Quirino, and said, Papa, I want to go to war. And my grandfather looked at him and says, well, if you go to war, then my son has to go with you. Dad used to say, when Lolo told me that I had to serve in the Korean War, of course I feared. I feared for my life. I didn't want my children to be fatherless. So that was my greatest fear. But the love for my father and my sense of duty to him as his son overtook any fears that I had. And so I said, yes, Papa, I will do it. That was the story of how both First Lieutenant Tomas Quirino and Luis Chito Gonzalez joined the war. It was just like Quirino to send his only son at that time and his only son-in-law to the war. Because when he said the Philippines goes to war, he'll send his own family first. Luis Rosales, your asawa de Babilte Quirino, pilot davon Pepto Fiore. Asawa davon. He was a spotter pilot. He would go on this small plane at very high altitude and look for the enemy and relay the information back to the base so that they could either fire artillery or have other planes uh, with armament go there because his plane had no armament at all. Dad was assigned to desk duties in the beginning. Signal she, he makes sure that all communication to the line to everyone has to be connected, that they properly connected can be contacted anytime because you don't go to combat without communication. Signal is very important. Because at this time he was married to the first lady of the Philippines, my mother, no? So Siguro they wanted to give him some type of preferential treatment and he didn't like that at all. So he wrote to them and he said for them to please give him combat missions. My mother even said to me that your father, quote unquote, would do anything to measure up in the eyes of his father in the sense of esteem and respect. So he kept telling their officer, I, I want to see action, I want to see action. My mother was totally worried. She kept writing to my father, come home soon. I miss you, sweetheart. She would apologize. I am so sorry to keep bothering you, but I haven't heard from you all this time. And the stories of my mom, on the other hand, she showed me some of the love letters of dad to her. He was pretty romantic. He said he missed the family. He wanted to be home. It must have been quite challenging for him. I remember him saying it was the worst time of my life. It was freezing. We were freezing. The biggest enemy that they had was the weather, actually, and homesick. Dad never left behind any memoirs, but he did send letters to my mom telling her that finally he got his wish and that he's pretty happy that he came home alive from the experience. When we left, the president Kirino sent us up, he was at the pier. And he told them, just before they left for Korea, and I will go. I sent ahead of you my only son and my son-in-law to offer their blood in the defense of democracy. Thus, my pride will be that with my own flesh and blood, I shall have participated in your coming struggle and victory for the honor and prestige of our country. That is what he said. Being part of PEFTO was one of Daddy's favorite episodes of his life. When he was diagnosed with cancer, the last trip he took was to Korea. He wanted to go back to the 38th parallel to Pamunjon, just to go back and rekindle those memories. For me, that told me a lot about what he felt about being in the Korean War. Also a moment of extreme pride that our fathers and my grandfather saw it fit to be part of the democratic principles of freedom, that we did what it took to keep our cherished democracy. And to all the soldiers that fought hand in hand, side by side, heroes of the pep talk, I salute you all. May the youth, like we do now, and hopefully generations to come, may they never forget the freedoms that were purchased with your blood and your sacrifice.
integrity Got you texting, emailing me Wanting me to feel with you Baby, just face reality, move on Sometimes it's hard to face reality 